Hi, this is Barry here, and you're very welcome to today's podcast episode from rightcom.com. And today's podcast episode is entitled Why You Need to Do Your Thing. Now, if you're only maybe in the beginning stages of writing, maybe setting up a blog, maybe going into the children's, uh, you know, uh, fiction market, or you're writing non-fiction, or maybe you you want to create a blog or something like that, you're probably thinking, well, you know, you have doubts like most of us have. You know, you've never done it before, and you're thinking, well, you know, will people actually read this article that I'm writing? Will people buy the book that I'm going to create? And you're going to have all these doubts, and you probably, for a lot of people, they will just give up at that first hurdle. And they'll, they'll think, well, you know, nobody's going to read my book, and who's going to come and visit my blog? Because, you know, I'm writing, uh, you know, I'm writing um, like a dieting blog, and, you know, there's so many dieting blogs out there. There's so many people have written on the Atkins, and can I really write something on the Atkins diet and bring something new to it? And, you know, everything's been covered, and maybe you're thinking all oh, the best storylines are gone in the romance genre or, you know or the children's books or your non-fiction book or whatever it is you're going to have all these doubts and for the majority of people they probably give up on the first you know that first hurdle they just dismiss it and say well that that was a nice idea but i won't actually do it and i'm here to tell you that you should follow through with it and it's probably you know not just because it's something that's in you that needs to come out you know you probably have that romance story that you know it's been bubbling away in your subconscious for a while and you'd love to to create it but it's not just for you know for you you don't know how that work that you're going to create is going to affect other people now, i've noticed this myself um from creating my um you know my my programs on the right come uh blog all the kind of writing uh programs and all the different things I've created there, I've noticed that, you know, if I hadn't gone and, for example, in the very, very first course I created was the children's picture book course, you know, if I had stopped straight away and said to myself, nah, I can't do it, I, I, I haven't got the ability, I can't speak on camera, I can't teach people how to do it. So many people would have never actually discovered that course and actually gone on to create picture books because of that. And, you know, I'm here to tell you that there's like a almost like a uh, ripples in the pond you know for example if you just throw a, a rock into a pond you know you'll find that those ripples will kind of spread further out and further out and you never know how your work is going to affect somebody else now i discovered this recently on um a podcast by kevin smith and on his smodcast episode he'd been talking to robert kirkman and if you don't know who robert kirkman is he is the writer of the very successful walking dead comics and maybe you don't know much about the comics but i'm sure you're aware of the tv show so when he started off writing those comics you know uh, he had a little bit of success at, at the beginning but this comic that he created on this kind of zombie apocalypse just suddenly took off and from its popularity from you know from people in the comic uh, buy-in audience the tv show then sprang from that but while that's been good, you know, while all of the success to Robert Kirkman had with that, that comic book and the TV show and all those different things, you know, if we just step, take a step out from that and have a look at the little ripple that came out from that. For example, Kevin Smith then had the idea of always wanting to do a TV show. And, you know, he never thought, well, he had ideas, but he wasn't too sure how he could do it. But he always wanted to create some kind of some kind of show uh, around his friends because his friends he thought were you know they had there was a great banter went on between them and he thought like the general public would like listening to them you know and and hearing all the funny stories and you know all the different things between them. and he thought that they were you know like most people do they think that their friends are the best thing and he said to himself wow i would love to have a tv show you know uh, where people could see my friends and discover how funny they are and you know all those different things that they, that, that they do and it came the idea that uh, somebody from AMC had come to him and said to him, you know, Kevin, we're interested in creating some kind of show that we can show after the Walking Dead TV show. Now, the audience, met, you know, the majority of audience would probably switch off after the TV show's open, of, you know, it's finished. But we'd like something maybe that we could, you know, clip on to the back of it maybe who would appeal to maybe people who were... Um, how would you call it like um, nerds like comic book nerds or something along that line that people were interested in it and Kevin was just thinking to himself and he says well he says you know I why don't we create maybe a TV show where you know where we have my friends and you know they're working they work in, in, a, in a comic book store and we could base the TV show on that and then from that idea then that TV show came about and they had the comic book men then and that was on AMC and it ran 
after the the Walking Dead TV show. And you know, you could probably you know when when you see the kind of like the degrees of separation, like we have Robert Kirkman with his highly successful TV show, then we have Kevin Smith then in the kind of next ripple out from that, who you know wanted to get a t- create a TV show, didn't know how, but thanks to, to Robert Kirkman's successful, you know the the zombie TV show, all of a sudden it gave him an opportunity to, to you know to, to clip on his TV show onto it, which was to which featured his friends. Now stepping out another ripple from that. I was listening to the podcast episode and Kevin was just talking to one of his friends that actually worked on the comic book, uh, comic book man TV show. And he was just saying like how successful it ran. It was, it ran for about, I think it was about six or seven seasons or something like that. And it was really, really popular and it had an audience of its own and it was growing under its own momentum and they used to go to conventions and you know all those comic book signings and all that and people used to see his friends and know him and used to ask for autographs and all those different things. And one of his friends was just saying that there was one convention that he was actually talking to uh, a gentleman who was in the army and he was part of uh, a group of uh, marines or servicemen who all suffered from PTSD. So as you probably know, you know, there is a kind of debilitating uh, thing to have and, you know, probably a, a lot of people need treatment from it. And one of those treatments is actually just sitting down in a group, something like Alcoholics Anonymous, and just speaking to each other and speaking about all the events that happened to them. But men being men, you know, compared to women, we have a hard time opening up and, you know, showing our feelings and letting people in and sharing all those different stories. But what they found was that, you know, a few of them were actually watching the comic book men TV show. And they thought, well, wow, that would be a great idea to, to bring it into our discussions. So as a warm up for, you know, each session, they would talk maybe about the TV, sh- the, the comic book man TV show that was on maybe the night before. And then they found then some of the men then were actually bringing in comics and they were kind of talking about the old times when they were younger and the comic books they used to read and the TV shows they got to read. And then slowly over time, this kind of opening up and speaking about the love of comics, opened them up then to speaking a little bit more about themselves. And then they've actually found this kind of a bridge that could get them from, you know, not saying anything about what they were going through to talking more about the events that was affecting their lives and, you know, the PTSD, you know, condition. And it, you know, it opened them up to discussing all those different things. And that was thanks to the TV show. So, like, all of a sudden we have Robert Kirkman who created a comic that became a really popular TV show. And then we have another ripple out from that then. We have Kevin Smith and his friends having the opportunity to create that TV show because of Robert Cartman's success. And then we can step out again then from the Comic Book Man TV show and how the, its success actually was, you know, a, a great help for those servicemen who were suffering from PTSD. So, like, if you look at it, like, what if Robert Kirkman had never written that first comic? What if he just said to himself, yeah, it's not really going to work? Or not, I never even tried the idea. You know, all those ripples then wouldn't be there. And it's going to be the same too for your work. You know, whatever fiction book you're going to write, non-fiction book, you know, you're going to affect someone's life. For example, maybe in my children's picture book course, just say, for example, maybe I showed someone how to create a picture book and they became an author. And all of a sudden, this person then had a greater belief in them because they've done that vid- that video course. They've learned how to be an author. They've learned how to create a picture book and they've put it up on the Kindle store. And all of a sudden, I've motivated that person. And then you never know what is going to happen from somebody else reading that particular person's book. You never know who's watching that person at home. Maybe it's a child watching the parent, you know, all of a sudden maybe being stuck in a nine to five job but now all of a sudden they have this opportunity and they're a published author and it's opened up that child's mind then to what maybe they could achieve and then you know you'd never know how those little ripples are going to affect all the people around you but if you don't actually do that you know create the thing that you're going to create that blog that's going to be read by all those people maybe that fiction book that you're going to write you know just because it's been written so many times by other people, you know, you are coming to the marketplace with your own ideas. You're going to have a unique idea that's going to affect somebody. And then you don't know how the change you're going to make in different in someone's life. For example, maybe if you wrote a diet book and then all of a sudden you explain something to somebody, explain something to somebody maybe that they had, their, you know, had the hard time getting around, maybe particularly maybe counting calories or something like that. And you explained it in a better way. And then all of a sudden you've made a difference in that person's life. All of a sudden then they find that they've no problem losing weight. And then, 
you don't know how that's going to spiral, you know, how it's going to, uh, you know, to, to ripple out from that person then. How is it going to affect maybe their friends and all of a sudden maybe they, they get their health back and they can spend more time with the kids or whatever it is. So I'm just here to tell you, just like Robert Kirkman, you don't know how your little project that you are going to create is going to affect somebody else. And then you don't know how that uh, ripple effect is going to affect somebody else from that. So I'm here to tell you, whatever your idea is, you know, do it. Not just because of all the things maybe you could ripple out from that, but just firstly for yourself. You know, get it out there. Get that idea out. Even if there's so many people have written in, the, you know, the blog and niche that you're in, or, you know, even if the, the romance market is totally saturated and you think, well, who's going to, you know, listen to me or who's going to, to buy buy books? Do your thing because you don't know how you're going to affect somebody else. But if you don't do that thing, you know, you're never, it's, firstly, it's, it's good for you. But you never know how it's going to affect somebody else. So whatever you are thinking of doing or doubting yourself that you can't do, just do it for yourself first. Because if you don't do it, you never know. All those people and all those different things are going to lose out because you didn't put your work out there. So I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode. I hope it motivated you maybe just to think beyond yourself because... You know, sometimes we'll actually do more work for others than we do for ourselves. So just think about, you know, if I don't do this thing that I'm going to do, how, you know, how, how am I going to lose out? Or how are people going to lose out because I'm not there in the marketplace or I'm not there in the blogging sphere or whatever it is because I'm not doing my work. So as always, thanks for sharing your time with me again today. I really, really appreciate it. And, you know, if you want to share this blog post with uh, somebody else's, your own audience or someone else's, I'd really, really appreciate it. just clicking on one of the social media uh, bookmarks or just telling people about the Right Come uh, blog and letting them know that it exists. So, again, thanks for sharing your time again today and take care and have a great day. Bye bye.